so Mike, let's drill down. Uh, week to week, uh, what does it look like for the church leader to be mm-hmm. approaching you know this issue head on? Right. Uh, I think a church leader has to look out on the congregation on a Sunday morning, whether you're kind of introducing the, the next song, whether you're starting to, to do the sermon. Uh, and the first thing to remember, uh, of course, is there is someone here uh, who's going to be wrestling with this issue in the same way that there will be someone here uh, who is wrestling with filling their tax returns, uh, who is having uh, an affair at work, uh, and, so on and, uh, and so on and so forth. Now, it's important to, to remember that, because as soon as you do that, then you start thinking, so how am I going to kind of make sure that this is real for that person, mm. but not simply marginalising, silencing, and offensive for them? So, so yeah, go on. Yeah, so we've spoken a lot about the, the church dealing with the risk outside, but now we're back, we will have people who are same-sex attracted in our congregation more and more. How do we, yeah, I guess, how, how do we... How do we allow our congregation members to, um, well, how do we teach our congregation members to, to deal with the problem, but also then how do we as a church not be uh, offensive, loving, you know, have the opportunity to share the gospel with the same-sex attracted person? Uh, I think the first thing is, is, is cutting out the anti-gay joke mm-hmm. uh, uh, and the anti-gay line. That, that's that's got to be part of it mm. uh, in the same way that uh, we wouldn't make jokes uh, in uh, in a kind of uh, crass and sensitive way, I, I hope about some of the, some of the other things that human beings uh, are, mm. are wrestling with. Mm. Uh, so we've got a we've got to watch language uh, first first of all, and recognise that there's this much truth in, in some of the the things that the gay lobby said that sometimes humour has humour in particular has been used as a uh, to to mask uh, what is in fact bullying mm. uh, in one way or another and belittling. That's inappropriate because it's inconsistent with the gospel. Mm. You can't do it. Uh, the the next thing is to remember that uh, in our culture, same sex is the same. Same sex attraction is the same as uh, other sins, but not. Uh, when I say same sex attraction, I should say same sex practice. Uh, 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 there, uh, same sex practice is a sin in the same way as other sins are sins. It's no worse, no better than, than other things. But at the moment, because of what's happening in our cultures. Uh, whether north or south of the equator, it has a kind of iconic status. Mm. And that is going to produce unique pressures, uh, I think, for the person who has same-sex attraction and is wanting to lead a godly life. Mm. Uh, They may well feel unable to tell their friends within church, this is my particular struggle. Uh, And they may well feel uh, that they cannot say anything outside the church either uh, because they're going to be dismissed as... uh, uh, you know, a moronic uh, person for being a Christian anyway. So what can the pastor do to encourage a healthy dialogue uh, in the church and to encourage the same-sex attracted person to, I guess, share that struggle in their, you know, in their community group uh, amongst their church family? Uh, I think we've got, to, we've got to do a couple of things, if, if I may say mm. so. Uh, the, first thing, the first thing is uh, we have to be clear uh, that this is talkable about... Uh, and that starts, I think, with uh, with the pastor, uh, and acknowledging that you know the pastor doesn't have every temptation that every member of the congregation has, but you know we recognise that this is this is a temptation, and it's not uh, the worst temptation that a person can have. Mm. Uh, in in some in some senses, it's it's not uniquely bad, uh, and I th- I think over the, the 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 trouble is there's so much freight behind this issue that sometimes it is treated in effect, as being uniquely bad. Mm. Uh, and it's going to require teaching to, to say, let's go back to to what uh, uh, actually God's plans for us are and the different ways uh, in which we as human beings break them. Mm. And that hard moment where you say, so the sin of the tongue, uh, in terms of uh, bitchiness, gossip, uh, in the sight of God, is as serious uh, as the person uh, who's got... Uh, uh, six wives stashed in different parts of of the country mm. is as serious as the person uh, who is defrauding uh, her clients is as serious uh, as the person who's indulging in same-sex immorality. Mm. Mm. Uh, and actually, curiously enough, we're not clear enough about the doctrine of sin at a teaching level, I think, sometimes. Uh, and I think that's that's one of the ways in which we 
both challenge appropriately and reassure mm-hmm. uh, the the person with 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 same sex attraction in the same way that we have to challenge the person uh, who is going to be characteristically inclined to think well all I do is say bitchy things. Uh, so speaking speaking about sin, giving someone a robust definition of uh, of sin is going to yeah. be important. And giving, uh, I, I would say, giving a a, a line, as in a telephone line, uh, a problem line, mm-hmm. uh, and having a dedicated member of the of the congregation or a de- dedicated group in the congregation, if you feel you can't talk to the pastor, but having a dedicated group and saying, uh, this is a chat line for help. Yeah. Uh, so if you're wrestling with uh, with this, then do that. I think that it's one of those interesting kind of secular wisdom things uh, here. Uh, I've noticed that even the, the BBC uh, at the moment, when it's dealing with a particular problem issue, will normally say at the end of it, if you have been affected by this programme, ring such and such a mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think actually there's a lot of wisdom in that. And we probably ought to be thinking about it not just for this issue, right. but certainly for this issue. Mm. Because uh, I, I think the same-sex attractive person in our congregations at the moment is uniquely pressured. Yeah, from both inside and outside. That's right. So then for the congregation member, how do, um, how do we help our congreg- congregation members uh, you know, deal with a topic in the workplace? Uh, you know, it, it's going to be hard for them to, to say, actually, here's what I think marriage is. Um, here, here's what I think is a Christian, um, is how we ought to live our lives. Uh, more and more we're going to be, I guess, not speaking about it at all, but... Uh, I think the church members are going to be actually uh, challenged to speak about this. Hey, I hear you go to a local church. What do they think about this? How do we prepare our congregation member for, you know, I guess, for, the, for, for answering those questions? Uh, this is, uh, again, I, I think a sort of slightly, slightly personal take. Mm. Uh, but I think most of the time when people get asked those questions, maybe in the workplace, people aren't interested in the answers about what the church thinks. They want to say what they think. Mm. Uh, and I think, in a sense, there's a case for rolling with that and encouraging church members to say, yeah, ask the questions. So, you know, you think that same-sex marriage is right. Okay, what do you think marriage is? Mm. Why do you think marriage is that? Why do you think same-sex marriage is the same as heterosexual marriage? Where are you getting that from? Mm-hmm. Uh, and actually in- encouraging and enabling people to ask questions uh, and ask questions back. Mm-hmm. And all the time asking questions back uh, I think to to find out ultimately what is your source of authority? Yep. Yep. Uh, is it God or is it uh, or is it something else? Uh, and uh, at that point, saying so, let, let's be clear here. Uh, the the reason why you think same sex marriage is fine uh, is because a lot of people in the Western world at the moment think that it is. Hmm. Uh, the reason why I don't think it's fine uh, is because I think God's told me it's not fine. Hmm. Uh, now, who do you expect me to listen to under those circumstances? Acts 4. Mm. Uh, uh, and in that sense, I don't think resisting the temptation to, to say, let's go to 1 Corinthians 6, uh, kind of straight off at the water cooler. Um, because I, I, I think in terms of the way that the argument develops, that's probably not necessarily, you know, sometimes it may work, of course. The best approach. Far better to understand someone's worldview to give an opportunity to the explain and encouraging yours. encouraging our congregation members to ask questions. So not just the courage to give answers when that's appropriate, mm. but the courage to ask questions and keep on asking questions and getting back to the so why do you say that? Where are you getting that from? That's real helpful, Mark. 